Hello everyone, welcome to Positron Plays Axiom Verge. Uh, if you're wondering, gee, didn't you already play this? Well, kind of. I streamed it a bit on the PS4, but I didn't actually complete the game since I heard the PS, the PC version is coming out soon, so I figured I'd do a, a more higher quality play on the PC version simply because I have a better recording setup. So if you're not aware of what this game is, it's uh, very simply put, it's Metroidvania. It's very Super Metroid. Uh, it's made by Thomas Happ in its entirety. He's done everything for it. So we'll start a new game here. I'm gonna play on normal, and I'm just gonna delete these. This is just making sure that my recording setup was all set and all that. So I have a little story to go at the beginning here. Certainly a rough start to the day. Calling out to Trace, that's us. Wake up, Trace. What happened? Trace, there is a gun in the next room. You must get it. What's going on? Where are you? Hello? Where am I? Here we are. Make sure that I actually have a save here. So it's controls, I mean, it's very, very Metroid. Um, I'm playing with a PS4 controller on my PC. And got a map, weapons and upgrades, notes. More of those will come along as we see. Also, I love these blocks. They're very uh, Norfair to me, an original Metroid. Well, what do we have here? The Axiom Disruptor, high-tech biomechanoid bio weapon. Is this the gun that the lady mentioned, or I just imagine her? Sorry, I'm very weak. You must go now before he finds you. Or who finds me? What's going on? Guess she's gone again. So, here we are, here's our gun, it's our main weapon. Uh, we will get many, many weapons throughout the game. And it's got a nice little lock-on thing where you can, or a stationary thing, so if you just wanna shoot in any direction, you can do so without having to worry about moving. And uh, with the right stick, you can switch weapons, but we don't have any yet. Also, the soundtrack to this game is amazing. I've tried to balance the audio so you can still hear me, but you can still get a, a lot of the music there, so hopefully that's working out. I tested it out quite a bit. So yeah, so I've played... I'm actually not sure how far I got into the game. I want to say maybe halfway. So the first half of the game will be somewhat familiar to me. And then the rest of it will be blind. But something interesting about the game is that um, outside of the speedrun mode, which is a special mode that is uh, available in the game at any time, uh, there are some things that are random. There are some locations of secret areas and things that are actually procedurally generated are a random location each time, which is pretty cool. So I won't know exactly where everything is, even though I've played through the first portion of the game. 
And as this is a Metroidvania, we'll come across a lot of things like, you know, we can't get past this barrier right now. So we'll have to do a little more exploring. Oh, if you do actually want to see me stumble along completely blind, um, you can look up the stream videos I did on the PS4. Just be aware that my my quality isn't exactly is well, it's not nearly as good. Um, so I was just using my headset for that. So and I don't think it'll be 60 FPS either. I don't think the PS4 natively streams that way. If I can pay attention and actually make that jump, there we go. There's another one of those barriers, which we can open with switches. However, we don't have any means of accessing that switch. So we've got a, like a spore spawner type thing here. Uh, knowing what knowing what I know of a couple of the things that come later, and uh, very eager to get back to that point. So you can see our health pool there. Um, actually, enemies do quite a bit of damage. But if we pick up those little red uh, bits, they will restore our health. Enemies can drop them. Um, bosses always give you pretty much a full amount. There we go, there's a little more. I could go up there, and I might as well. I don't think I can travel up there. Like I said, I mean, it's been a little while since I first played. So even these new, or these beginning areas are going to be a little new to me. Much more aggressive enemy here. I don't know what these guys are. Oh, okay, so this is, uh... Well, it's a, it's a glitch wall, basically. Uh, we can't do anything with that yet, though. And it does hurt me if I touch it, so I'm going to be a little careful there. I want to keep my distance on, uh, on these guys for now, and I don't have a lot of health. We will increase our health bar at some point, but not quite there yet. Oop, okay, that one almost hit me. There we go. A little bit of health back. We can shoot down, which is very nice. All right, so we can see here, we can open the switch by shooting it. However, we're gonna get trapped on this side unless we find another way to get by there. And of course we will. And in this capsule, we find our first new weapon. All right, so we've got the Axiom Disruptor and the Nova. I'm gonna assign these to my quick slots. There we go, yeah. So the Nova fires a, uh, an energy ball that we can detonate at any time. And it gives kind of a spread pattern. As a weapon, I don't find it to be that good. However, it is very useful for doing stuff like this. We can send a, a ball up there and then detonate it and open those switches. So now you can know there's certainly some areas where we can go back to now. And it does okay damage. The spread is kind of nice for hitting stuff like this. But it's not the most damaging weapon for sure. You can see it's taking quite a bit of time to take this thing out. I'm actually kind of curious how many shots it is going to take to take it out. A lot. So this will be a primary uh, utility weapon for now, but it will get upgraded. Switch here. I have to get used to having very little health. Last time I played, I had much, much more health than this. Obviously, since I've been playing for a little while. There we go. Get back in the groove, though. Alright, so first thing we can do 
once I'm done falling, is we can go right over here. Open this door. Switch back to the disruptor here. Disruptor is pretty much your standard go-to weapon. Um, it's basically useful in every situation. Um, and there are some, you know, some encounters you won't be able to really use it too much, but it's it's basically just your standard machine gun type of style weapon. Always reliable. So I think there is something here. Yeah, there we go. Size note, permanently increases projectile size for weapons. So you can see now we're firing bigger shots. Now, bigger shots don't necessarily mean more damage. It just means that, you you know, easier to hit things with, basically. More range, in a sense, and we can't go up there yet. So we'll fall all the way back down. Let's see, there's a cool thing you can do in the PC version now, I guess it app reminders. You can set a couple little notes that help you find your way if you're forgetful, like me. Kinda nice, nice little addition. Alright, there's an enemy hiding here. Yeah. Makes a hell of a sound. So you'll be a little, uh... You can usually tell where they are by their claws, and they will jump out at you. Can't really do much with them right now, but we'll be able to later. Here's how the save room. Let's kind of check uh, something. Alright, so we still got... Yeah, keep going on this episode. I don't know if we'll fight our first boss in this episode. We might. Yeah. This is usually a sign that there is a boss coming. Crap, I'm trapped. Demon. Hey, you can talk? Listen, I'm uh, lost and... They do say kill. Uh, yeah, this guy doesn't want to talk to us at all. Or whatever it is. So bosses in Axiom Verge are usually pretty big, and they usually fire a lot of shots at you. This one guy also has some mines. Also, I like how the guy fires his shots kind of in time with the beat. That was kind of amused me. Now he's not, now he's firing pretty fast. You can see he's fla starting to flash red though, so he's probably in pretty bad shape here. And he is getting angry. To watch my location. Oh, I actually took some damage there. And we can't hit him in the back either. There we go. Nice. And that was Zeter. With a nice explosion, he leaves behind a whole bunch of health for us to pick up. That takes care of our first boss. He leaves behind a, uh, an item for us. A laser drill. High powered drill capable of cutting through rock. Now this is an item that we always have equipped at any time. We can just hit the right trigger and we can drill. Any blocks that look like this are drillable and sometimes others as well. When in doubt, drill it out basically. The drill can also do some damage, too. So it's showing us kind of like a combination of weapons here. Oops. Oh, come on. There we go. So you see here the drill does some damage. And this is our little tutorial on that. Not all drillable blocks are very obvious. I think that's a health pickup. Nope, it's power note. Permanently increase weapon and item damage.
So the drill isn't a great weapon, but it can serve a purpose against some enemies. And it does not go through walls either, as you can see. It's pretty fun to use, plus it's always available. You don't ever have to switch to it or anything like that, so it's pretty nice. So we get a little bit of backstory there. The creature named or, uh, named Zeter mentioned Zedos, and Zeter, I mean, you know, it's Redux backwards, which is kind of interesting. Alright, so there's a couple of places I can go now that I have this. Let's see, um, I'm gonna try to go up first, a little less obvious place. It might have a power-up for us. I'm actually not entirely sure if I can even get there yet, but I'm gonna try. Drill out some of this space here. I think I'll be able to reach this platform, yeah. Switch weapons back here. Oh, okay, yeah, I don't think I can do anything here yet, but I'll, I'll show off this little area. Have some kind of Space Invaders type enemies in here. They do explode when they die, too, so we're too close to take damage. And of course, you know, I had to show that off, right? Something interesting, too, about the game is the way its save and respawn system work. If you die, you don't actually lose any progress. You just go back to the last save point um, with anything you've collected still. So you don't ever have to recollect items or anything like that. Awesome, awesome feature. And we actually get another weapon in here. The Multi-Disruptor. Check this out, it fires three projectiles. Short range though, but it will fire three shots at once. And I think all three shots can hit a single enemy. Doesn't do as much damage as our primary disruptor, as far as I know. But uh, definitely useful for taking out multiple enemies or just hitting close range stuff with a lot of shots. Not quite a shotgun, but pretty useful. And it's good for clearing this stuff out. Alright, so there's another area we saw earlier that has drillable blocks. So let's head there and see if we can go down. And I don't know, maybe there's something here? No. Alright, new area. And we see there's some of those wall guys hiding in there. And as long as we are on the same plane as them, they will continue to attack. Oh, I'm gonna die here. Well, this would be a good time to show that off. Alright, so I died, and I get popped back to my last save point. What just happened? You died. We saved your mind machines. Yeah, what? Sorry, miss, I think, I hope I'm misunderstanding something. Could you try rephrasing that? Hello? This is insane. I died and I'm still me? Or am I still me? That's actually a uh, question he's asking there. So I'm actually going the wrong way here. Or no. Got myself turned around. Yeah, so you'll see uh, on the map here that we still have all that area uncovered. So we didn't lose any progress, something like that. We still have the, the multi-disruptor. Yeah, very, very cool feature. Definitely makes exploration, you know, taking risky exploration kind of a... Uh, something you really want to do. And exploring this game is really just a joy because of things like that. If you wander into somewhere you can't handle and you die, you don't really lose anything from it. So this is one of those glitch areas. You can't do anything with that yet. And that will hurt me if I touch it, so I want to be careful there. There's another version of it. Now this isn't as corrupted, but we can't get through there either way. And that type doesn't uh, touch me or hurt me when I touch it. 
And you can hear this stuff actually makes a sound. Seeing if there's any uh, hidden spots there. That looks like it might be a hidden spot. Nope, I guess not. See if I can get uh, anywhere over this way. And I'd probably save next time. Oh, alright. Can't do anything in here yet either. Kind of a weird uh, background there, too. Got some blue versions of these guys. They're pretty much the same. I think they might have a little more health. And you can see we got some of those red versions of those dashing enemies here now. Uh, we can't jump high enough to do anything here yet, though. And that is just satisfying. <laughs> This might be a health upgrade. Yes, health note. Permanently increases health. There we go. And there are small versions of those too. Small versions are uh, one out of five. So here we have kind of a Metroid style transport room. We head through here and we'll go into a new area. Complete with new music. And here we have a save room. So I'll pause here for now, and we'll continue into this new area next time. I'm curious, what's the name of this area? Absu. We were in uh, Iburu, I believe. Or Iribu, yeah. So we're in Absu now. Alright, and that'll do for now. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Look like if you did, helps out a lot. Uh, I'll have a link to the game Steam page below if you want to pick it up for yourself instead of watching me play, but I hope you watch me too. And I'll see you soon.